Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Borg, a.k.a. Projo, and this is going to be our Phantoms weekly recap to the last week of games, and then a weekly preview to this week's of games, obviously starting off tonight, this evening, against the Binghampton Devils in Newark at the practice facility. They're playing at the Devils practice facility um, in Newark against those Binghampton Devils tonight at 7 p.m. But first, we will recap the games of the last week and go over them as the Phantoms had a very good game against the Hershey Bears, one of the other top teams in the AHL this season, being able to outshoot them by one. Both teams won one for four in the power play. The Phantoms' PK was still very effective in that game, uh, being ranked second then to the Tucks and Roadrunners, the uh, Arizona Coyotes AHL affiliate. Forster was able to have a four-point game, count them, four-point game. This dude is playing brilliantly as the Flyers' first-round pick in this past draft, looking absolutely fantastic. Of course, the sixth-round pick in the 19 draft, if my memory serves correctly, and Tanner Lazinski looked very good in over eight minutes. A play when it comes to the Phantoms um, in the NHL in his first game for the Philadelphia Flyers. So big congratulations to him. They're looking like some of these draft picks are really starting to pan out. And Forster definitely looks like one of them. Wilman as a pickup looks like he's definitely a guy that's going to get a chance to make the team next year. Again, the two-way contract was able to get an assist on the first Forster goal with Wilson. And then Forster got an assist on a Pouillot goal who's been a very, very, very key piece as a veteran on defense for the Lehigh Valley fans, especially offensively. And also at times making some good stick-checking plays. Uh, not always the sexiest defender, but he gets it done, I think, in my opinion. I think he's underrated in that department as well, and is very effective on offense. And then Forster was able to score again, and then had the assist on the Fitzgerald goal, who actually leads the team in goals and is becoming a very big dominating force on the ice, and not just a role player now, really establishing himself as a guy that can really take the mantle and be one of the core players of a team at the AHL level, and is a guy, especially having the great cousin connection with Kevin Hayes, if he can continue to perform, it will be interesting to see if he is a guy that is a candidate for a two-way contract in the future. We will have to see as it plays out if he is a guy that becomes a candidate for that. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. But that was that game. They really look good. They look great against Hershey. They were able to really stay aggressive, uh, really look good drawing penalties in this game as well. Wisdom continues to look very effective on the ice. He's a guy, no matter if Wilman, Wisdom, those guys don't score um, same goes with Allison and Forster. All those guys, you just notice them when they're on the ice. And same goes with Pouillot on defense. Uh, you just notice them when they're on the ice, whether they end up being on the score sheet or not, which usually does happen a lot. They're just noticeable players. So that was a fantastic game uh, for them on the 31st, which was last Wednesday against the Hershey Bears. Then it was a pull at your heartstrings like it usually is. The Wilkes-Barre Scram Baby Penguins were cold coming into it. Phantoms didn't play their best hockey, but that's what great teams do. That's what great competitive teams do. They find ways to win when they don't play their best hockey. And that was really the mantra, the vibe of the post-game press conference after that game, that this team just always has the great mentality, the great perseverance, the great oomph to just find a way to win and push through anything. Um, in that game, Cal O'Reilly, one of the better of all time AHL players, uh, looking to reach 500 assists, was able to pot a goal assisted by Logan Day and Wade Allison. Felix Robert's a guy the Phantoms just have to lock down. He's becoming a Phantoms killer as the undrafted cat that the Penguins were able to pick up that looks like he could be a good guy, assisted by Churchman and Razim Zahorna, who looks like a very good prospect for them as well, the 6'6", a kid coming over from the Czech, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, and um, looks really good. I uh, was able to score a goal in the slot for the um, Pittsburgh Penguins in his first a game there, and then Pierre Olivier Joseph was able to get one assisted by Drew O'Connor, another prospect for the Phantoms top guy, and Josh Curry. But Forster again looked good in this game, uh, being able to score on a changeup over DeOrio, and then DeOrio later in the game made a save on an absolutely brilliant shot later in that period that was much better than that flutter changeup that was assisted by Wilson and Wilman. But that's sports for you, that's just how it goes. Allison was able to have a brilliant wrist shot that he was able to get in, assisted by O'Reilly and Fitzgerald. This guy already has an NHL-level shot once he's able to grow and nurture. Probably shortly, he looks like a guy that's right on the cusp, just like Lazinski was. I wouldn't be surprised if he's caught up soon. Uh, Young Drogues was able to score the other goal. And then Tyson Forster tying it up with 48 seconds left from Connor Bunneman and Max Wilman. And both Bunny and Tanner Laz or not Tanner Lazinski, both Bunny and Carson Trewinski, somewhat similarness there, um... When it comes to them, since being sent down from the Flyers taxi squad, looked brilliant in their first game of action against Wilkes-Barre down there. Especially early on in the game, both making plays, both looking really good. 
And that's something that's definitely key for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms as they're sent down to get some playing time and get going and get their mojo going and their skating legs. And it was very great to see them be successful. And then you had Tyson Forster after having a great two-goal game. Obviously, it doesn't complete the hat trick in the shootout, but being able to get it done with a nice skating and slowly brilliant backhander over to Oreo, who I thought played really well. This was a weird four-goal game. Both McIntyre and Oreo I thought played really well. But then, um, obviously, uh, in the shootout, uh, Forster was able to be the only guy to score on that great skating, and Zane McIntyre stepped up and played brilliantly in the shootout. After playing brilliantly and making some big saves in the game, he really didn't have any chances on any of the goals there. So I thought he played great in the game. And now we can move into this evening, where our 12-3-2 Phantoms, this week uh, we would have three games against Binghampton, um, at the start of the week and the end of the week on Sunday, and then you have Hershey in the middle, um, which is on the 10th at 7.05. So the 12 3 and 2 fans take on the 3 8 and 4 1 uh, Binghampton Devils. Um, I think the Phantoms obviously are the favorites coming into this game. They have the much um, load, more loaded team, the much more superior team to Binghampton, but you can never take a team lightly. You can never take anybody lightly. You know, obviously, you have to watch Boquist, Kevin Ball. you got to watch. Graham Clark, I just saw an interview with him on um, Hockey Central Saturday, this past Saturday, that was brilliant. Uh, both him and then Brant, that's in this year's draft, I think are going to be pretty good players. He has seven points in five games. You definitely want to look out for him. You want to look out for Nolan Foote. There's guys on this team you want to look out for that are solid prospects. Uh, coming up with New Jersey and former Phantom player Danik Martell, of course, you want to be able to look out for, as well, among others. You definitely don't want to get... Um, hit by Vuka Jevic, the 212 pound uh, guy uh, looking at him here. So you want to look out for him. But with this team, they've been having some struggle bunny stats from their goaltenders as well. So you want to just be able to get this puck on net, keep pressuring their defense, which hasn't been as sound as they wanted to be this year. And the Phantoms should be able to be good against the Binghampton Devils. I would look for in this game, Lozinski and Bundeman against a rival um, like we're playing all season this season. That really plays to those guys, types of plays out to be aggressive, be physical, play their game big time again. I think they're going to flourish really coming back down here to get their playing time. Because you're playing the rivals all the time for the Pennsylvania Cup. Plus, then you play Binghampton as your other team with the regional schedule. So I think that really plays to those guys' mindset and play styles. I think they're going to look really well. And then, obviously, just Allison, Fitzgerald, and then Wilman are just going to continue with Forster to be absolute menaces on the ice for the other team. And I think that's why the Phantom uh, should be able to win this game pretty good in Binghampton. I'll go 5-2 to two, uh, Lehigh Valley tonight. I think they should be able to pressure Binghampton. That should be a game like how they played a much better Hershey team. If they can come out and just not downplay the opponent, which I haven't really seen them do, they should be able to have some keen success in this game. Then they have off for the rest of the week until Saturday when they then have back-to-back -back games because of the one makeup that we'll get to soon. That's on Sunday at 5.05. Venoms on Saturday play the Hershey Bears. Yet again, after beating them 4-1 to one in the last tilt at Lehigh Valley, they're 12-5-2 they're now. Obviously, they play this week, but that's what they are now uh, as we preview it today on Monday, the 5th of April. Um, and then the Phantoms are 12-3-2. I think the Phantoms this is going to be a much tougher game. I think it'll be a much closer game no matter who's in that Um Obviously, it'll be McIntyre if Sandstrom still banged up a bit, but if he's able to come back, I think they'll want to get him a gate. So no matter who's in net for both of these sides, I would say for the Bears, they're more inclined to go with Fukali because of how good he's looked. Copley's been struggling a bit this year, but you got to just pressure them like you did in that last game. If you're able to pressure them like they did in that last game, I envision the Bears playing much better defense and playing a much more enclosed, tighter game in this game. So I think it will definitely be closer on Saturday. But the Phantoms are able to play like they played against the game we previewed to start this video on Wednesday, the 31st, and they can easily get it done. They just got to keep pressuring them, especially with that Allison line, especially with Forster, especially with the aggressiveness of Bunny and Trewinski as well now being back down. And obviously the aggressiveness of a big boy like Isaac Ratcliffe. You have to be able to really pressure a team like Hershey like they did in that Wednesday game. I think that'll be a much closer game. I think that game's definitely a winnable game for how well the fans have played this year. I just definitely think it'll be much closer when it comes to that tilt. So I'll go 3-2 to two when it comes to that tilt. Um, and then this week, 
we have Binghampton to close out the week. So the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, in order to sweep the week, they have the Binghampton Devils, who as long as you don't downplay to them, you should be able to beat them with how good this team's playing and how well this team's rolling in both of those games. And then you just have to beat Hershey in the middle in order to sweep the week. So they play Binghampton again next Sunday. And again, it's the same thing. As long as you come in aggressive, you keep it firing against those goalies, you pressure their defense, just like I think they can tonight, they should be able to take good advantage of the Devils and be able to win that game at least by a 4-2 to two score or something like that. So that is your recap of the last week for our Lehigh Valley Phantoms and preview to this week. I think they have a good chance of honestly sweeping this week because they got Binghampton twice, who's one of the coldest teams and one of the more struggle bunny teams. They do have young players, like I pointed out earlier, that you got to watch out for. But as long as you watch out for those guys and don't downplay to them, they should be able to beat them twice. Just play up to the Bears, play as good, play them like they're basically the Capitals as they are their minor league affiliate, but that's how they they play as good as them equivalently in the AHL for years on end now. Play them like that and play up to them like you just did on Wednesday. And I think the Phantoms have a good chance to sweep this week. I hope you all enjoyed the weekly recap of last week's games and the weekly preview of this week's games against Binghampton, Hershey, and then Binghampton again is the makeup game on Sunday. Everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant week. Stay safe out there and go Lehigh Valley Phantoms and enjoy all the great hockey action. This has been Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, a.k.a. Projo. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Trying to hit 130 by the end of this week. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Peace out.